What's up everyone, it's your boy Stump, and welcome to another Tips and Tricks video. I'll be honest, this is one of the most requested videos that you guys have been asking for in the comments, and if you've seen the title of this video, then you know exactly what we're doing today. Today I'm going to show you the settings in Critical Ops that you need to have, and the settings that I personally use. So let's go ahead and get started. So now to find your settings, you're going to look for this gear icon at the top right. You're going to tap on that and you're going to find your whole settings page right here. And the first thing that opens up is the general settings. This is where you'll find your support, the language you want to set. Oh, geez, it's now in Russian. You also have your target frame rates. You could go 30, 60, 90 or 120 FPS if your device allows it. And then you get to your user interface. So show HUD shows the user interface and touch controls. So when I turn it off, there is no mini map. There is no scoreboard. There is no health. There is no crosshair. It is just vanilla, absolutely nothing, but you can still press buttons if you know where to find them. All right, next up we have the controller opacity. That's just the amount of visibility you have through your buttons. So let's say we have it turned all the way up to 100%. You can see now the buttons are fully present. There's no fade on them. And when you go back, to 50%. You can now sort of see through them, but I personally like to keep it at 30%. It gives me just that much more visibility through my buttons and I can also still see them. You can also have control opacity set to 0%, which means you can't see any of the buttons, but you're still able to have your crosshair on the screen. You also have your scoreboard, your health, your money, your mini map, but all your buttons are invisible. All right, now show FPS meter. That's just the FPS meter in the top, right in the middle there. You can also say your FPS meter position. So right now it's currently in the center. If I go back to the right, you can see it in the top. For me, this is about the middle. You can also show the debug info, which shows how much memory your device is using to run the game. I don't run with that. I just turn that off for your social stuff. You have block friend requests and clan requests. I have my block friend requests turned off on because well my friends list is full for one because everyone wants to send me friend requests i also have block clan requests off because well i'm already in a clan you also have your profanity filtering for your chat you also have disable cross team chat and disable team chat make sure you have these turned off so that way you're able to communicate with your team and also be able to trash talk to the other team in pub matches so now that we've gone through the general tab, let's go through the gameplay tab. Now this affects your gameplay experience. This affects how you play the game in general. So right here, the top weapon view size, it changes the size of your gun, hands, and arms on the screen. So right now I have it set to five and that's what this looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and set to zero. As you can see, it is a little bit smaller and then we're gonna go ahead and set it all the way up to 10. As you can see, it is much bigger now. You have a much bigger view model of the weapon. However, when you're playing with bigger guns like the ratio they're also pretty big and you can see it's blocking the whole right side of your screen so i personally have it set to five which is a nice happy medium all right next we have the field of view and the way i like to do it is i like to use the reception area right here so i'm going to take a few steps back till rec is visible on the right side now if we go into settings i have my field of view set to zero which only shows rec on the right hand side so if I scroll this up all the way up to 10, you'll see on the right side, RCE is showing. So you definitely get more peripheral vision on your sides, but it also stretches your view to where it makes this look smaller. So if we look here at these far corridor here, if we switch it back to what I had it previously set to zero, it looks much bigger now. So having a wider FOV is good if you're holding multiple angles and you need to see different areas at the same time, but you also have a longer range to deal with. It's going to be harder to see players downrange. All right, next is our crosshair settings, and the first one is dynamic crosshair. So if you have this turned on, you're going to notice when I move around, the crosshair spreads out. And when you're walking, it spreads out less but you're still inaccurate. And when you're not moving at all, there is no crosshair expanding. There is, however, crosshair expanding when you shoot. You can barely see it right there, but if I start tap firing, you can see it expands out pretty far. But having the dynamic crosshair turn on gives you an idea on how accurate you are when you are running around with your gun. If you start shooting now, you can see your bullets go all over the place, but when you're just standing still, your bullets go directly to where the crosshair is showing. 
However, for your sniper rifles that don't have crosshairs when you're not scoped in, it doesn't really affect it that much. All right, now up to the crosshair size. This is just the size of your crosshair and how big you want it. And when you first start out in Critical Ops, you start with a 100% crosshair size, which looks something like this. As you can see, this crosshair is very large compared to what I had before, and it takes up a lot of space. So it makes it harder to see what you're aiming at, especially downrange. Having your crosshair set to a lower value, like say 50%, which is what I like to play with a lot, it makes it big enough so you can see it and small enough so that way you can see what you're hitting. However, if you are on a larger device like a tablet, I would not recommend having a 30% crosshair size because this is what you're gonna get. So I usually leave mine at around 50%. All right, up next we have custom crosshair color. I have this turned off by default because I usually use an aim trainer with a white crosshair. It's, and it's also what I've been using since I've been playing this game. So it depends on how you want to play. So if you turn this on, you're then met with all of these different options. You have this color slider right here, which you can set between a bunch of different colors. You set it to red, yellow, green, blue, purple. However, the recommended colors are probably the best colors to use, which is white, green, blue, and purple. And when you get out, you can see the color almost takes effect immediately. However, when you have this setting turned off, it goes back to the default white color. It also has a black outline, so you're able to see the cross here and have it stand out with the background behind you. Up next are your hit markers. These are when you're hitting your opponent. It'll give those little ticks on the outside whenever you hit your opponent. Like, for example... Alright, you saw that, right? Those tick markers come up whenever you hit a player, and they turn red whenever you bring their health down to zero. So if you want to be able to tell if you're hitting players, this is what you want to use. Now the damage indicators are those little red areas that show up around your crosshair to show incoming damage. And right now I have them set to small, so if I slap myself, you can see the damage indicators like that. And I believe it's the higher the damage, the wider the damage indicator is to show how much damage you're taking from that area. Yes, yeah, see, it's bigger the more damage you take. You also have medium and large, and you can also turn them off, but it's good to have them on so that way you know where you're taking damage from, so that way you can quickly turn around and deal with that situation. All right, up next we have our weapon settings. Now, this is what you will be using to switch between your weapons. So first up, we have quick swap priority. This is the weapon you switch to when you tap the weapon bar at the bottom right of your screen right here. So if I go ahead and give myself an assault rifle real quick, I can show you how this works. So currently it is set to primary weapon as quick swap priority, meaning if you switch to another weapon, like let's say your knife, and you tap the weapon bar, it's going to switch back to your assault rifle. Same with the pistol, same with the bomb, and same with any grenades that you use. However, when you set it to previous weapon as your quick swap priority, let's say you go switch to your pistol, then you wanna to switch to your grenade. Instead of switching back to your primary weapon, it'll go back to the weapon before you swap to the your current weapon. So previous weapon just means the last two weapons that you have selected. I hope that makes sense because I'm not explaining that again. Now, I always have my quick swap priority set to my assault rifle or my primary weapon because if I am dealing with a situation, if I hear players coming around a corner when I'm holding a grenade, I could quickly tap my weapon bar and I could switch to my assault rifle to be able to deal with that current threat. All right, now we have auto equip weapon on pickup. It's pickup and switch to looted weapon automatically. So what that means is if you are running and you don't have an assault rifle, but you see an assault rifle on the ground, if this setting is turned on, then if you run over the weapon, you pick it up and it'll automatically equip itself. But there is a problem with this. So let's say you have a weapon right here, but you're going to be peeking this with your pistol. So you're going to be looking around this corner and uh-oh, you picked up a weapon and there's an enemy right there. They start shooting at you before you have time to shoot at them. And I walk over the AUG. You can see how long it takes you to actually shoot the weapon when you pick it up. What I would do is I would have this setting turned off, your auto equip weapon on pickup. And then you have automatic weapon swap and then automatic swap to knife. What those do is when you run out of ammo in all your weapons, it'll automatically swap to your secondary. And if you run out of ammo in your secondary, it'll automatically swap to your knife. I have those turned on so that way I am able to be able to handle situations better in the impossible scenario that I run out of ammo before I ace the entire team. All right, that's all the gameplay settings. Now let's 
let's get into the controls. This is probably one of the more requested sections of the settings that I show because this is where you have all of your touch controls. This is where you have all of your sensitivities. This is where your gyro's at. This is where all your button input settings are at. So let's go through this. So first up, you have edit touch controls. Tap this and it shows your entire button layout. This is my current layout. Screenshot it if you want to copy it. But the way I have it set up is I have it set up like I would play on a controller where I have my shoot button on the right trigger, aim on my left trigger, and my thumbs are used to aim and to move around. So that is edit touch controls. Now dynamic movement pad, what that does is it gets rid of your movement pad in the bottom left and wherever you touch on the left side, it'll automatically create a movement pad. However, I don't think this is a very good option to have turned on because it makes your movement very inconsistent. All right, next up is aim support assisted enemy tracking. This is just basically aim assist and it is very small in this game. There's not a lot of aim assist in this game, but it is still good to have turned on, especially if you're in a ranked game. Now, some players will say that this is a bad setting to have turned on because it messes up with your aim. I like to disagree because it helps your aim focus on one target at a time. And if your aim is good enough, you'll be able to aim at specific targets. So I have it set at 100% and you probably should try it out at 100%, see how it works. And don't try anything in between because anything in between is just useless it's either all or nothing and now comes the most requested part the horizontal and vertical sensitivities i have mine set to four and the reason i have my vertical sensitivity set to the same as my horizontal sensitivity is because i am able to control the recoil of my assault rifles easier the higher your vertical sensitivity the easier it is to control your assault rifles and the way that i used to find my sensitivity is that i would start looking at a vertical line like this bring my thumb to the edge of the screen, and then do a full 180. I move my thumb outward to a comfortable position to where I could do a 180. So you don't want have, so you don't want to have your thumb going all the way across the screen to do a 180. But now, I have been working on trying to do perfect 90s to be able to aim around 90 degree corners. So the way I would find your sensitivity now is I would start with your thumb or whatever finger you use to aim, resting in a comfortable position where you would have your thumb set up on your device. Then you bring your thumb to the edge of your screen and then bring your thumb back to that comfortable resting position. You should be able to do a full 90 degree turn with that motion. Now for me, it's a little more because I still use the 180 method, but this 90 degree method is a little bit better. So you still have the two full swipes to do a full 360 degrees, but it's much more effective than just doing a full 180 with a full thumb swipe because it could be different each time. Your scoped in assault rifle and scoped in sniper rifle sensitivity is based off of your current sensitivity and it affects how much you aim when using a scoped weapon. If I go with the 90 degree aiming, it's normal, but when I scope in, it is much less. I'm doing the same motion I did with the 90 degrees. Now I have mine set at 90% because you want to be more precise when aiming downrange. You can still do some pretty insane flicks, but you don't need your scope sensitivity at 100%. It's not worth it. All right, next, you have your advanced aim settings. You want to have this turned on so that way you can get into the more nuanced settings that are a part of the control settings. So turn this on and you have access to all of these different settings. So I'll go through them with you guys here. So first up, you have extra aim sensitivity. This is basically aim acceleration. Now to have the most consistent aim in critical ops, you want to have this turned off. Have it set to 0%, 100% of the time. Up next, we have the default shoot joystick. This is just turning your shoot button into a joystick. So if you do play on a smaller screen, you can use your shoot button to aim, essentially. You also have your additional shoot button, which activates your secondary shoot button. Default shoot button is on the right side of your screen. Secondary shoot button is on the left side of your screen. So that way you have more options to shoot if your right hand is busy doing something else. If you turn this on, you also have secondary shoot joystick, which turns your secondary shoot button into a joystick, just like your default shoot button. Up next, you have your activate aim joystick. This means using a weapon that has a scope. Turning the setting on means you're able to aim with it. 
You also have to hold down the aim button in order to keep aiming with it. You also have the same sensitivities for the touch controls. You can also activate it for scoped rifles as well. You also have a release to shoot setting. So where if you turn this on, you automatically fire when you let go of the aim button. So if I turn this on, I aim and then I'm not touching. I'm raising my right hand here automatically fires. And next we have invert touch settings. If you're a mad lad, like some players are, they play with inverse controls. So if you have both of those on, looking to the right will make you look to the left and vice versa. And looking down will make you look up and vice versa. And then we have buttons block access input. So prevent aiming when pressing buttons. This just means, let's say you have your pistol here, you can use your fire button to aim. So when you press any button, you're able to look around. I personally have this turned off because when I'm shooting or tap firing, I don't want to be messing up my aim when I'm doing something like that. Now, activate gyroscope. It just turns on your gyroscope, enabling to aim by tilting your device. I have this turned off because I don't use gyro, but if you turn it on, you're given all of these different settings here and all of these settings above apply to gyro. So whatever your aim sensitivity for touch controls is up top, it'll be the same for gyro. And that's all of the settings for your controls. And these are the controls that I use. Now let's go ahead and move on to the graphics. So graphics is pretty self-explanatory mandatory it deals with all of the visuals that you see within the game itself. And right here, it automatically sets the best graphics for your device. But if we turn this off, you can see all of the different settings that you can select. You have level of detail, shader detail, texture quality, anti-aliasing, tracers, particles, environmental particles, and color grading. I don't know what anti-aliasing does. Don't ask me because I don't care. So right now it sets automatic. You can select different types of settings. You can set it to lowest, low, medium, high, and ultra, which is the highest settings. And if you turn this back on and turn it off again, it resets it to automatic at the top. However, if you change any of the settings right in here, like this, it'll automatically set it to custom. I usually don't mess with the graphics that much. I just have it set to the default settings and that's it for the graphics. And last but certainly not least, we have the audio settings. Now, recently they updated it to where you now have audio sliders. So now if I turn the master volume down, you're not going to hear anything. So if I do this, you can barely hear it. But I always like to leave my master volume set all the way up to 100%. So that way I can hear everything in the game. Every bullet fired, every step taken does not get past these ears. And if we go back to the menu, you can hear my music volume, which I have set at 5%. There's the music. So now if you set it all the way to 100%, it gets really loud and it kind of overpowers my voice. So I usually set it down back to 5%. So that way there is some ambient music in the background. So that way when I'm talking to you, it's not just a dead white noise. All right. And with that, that is all of the settings in Critical Ops and all of the settings that I personally use. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all learned something today. And if you made it this far in the video, then you might as well just hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell to see when I upload so you don't miss another video. I also post shorts daily throughout the week. So stay tuned for those. And as always, stay safe. Bye-bye.